YouTube, my name is Paul, hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another, what have I been doing this time, a comparison video, comparing some games, ZX Spectrum versus the mighty Commodore Amiga. Now in this series I'm picking out games that I've played back in the day that were better on the Spectrum, in my view, uh, play better than the Commodore Amiga versions. So the one I've chosen today is Flying Shark. A game that was released again by Electrocoin, I think published it over here in Europe. But it was released by Toplan, so get a bit of a Toplan fix at the moment. I do like their shoot 'em ups to be fair, even though they're all quite similar. So Flying Shark released in the arcade in 1987. It is a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up, kind of based on an old biplane. I believe it's the first game released by Toplan to use the 68000 processor. So you'd think a port over to the Amiga and the ST was probably quite doable, even though the arcade machines probably had custom chips for certain other functions. But yeah, it's a great game. I love the game personally. Um, I played the Spectrum version first before play playing it in the arcade. In fact, I think I played the Spectrum version, then the Atari ST version, and then finally got around to playing the arcade version. And that was on emulation, unfortunately. I never played it in the arcades. But yeah, so it's quite interesting to see the C64 version, which was called Sky Shark in North America, and it got its own C64 release. So yeah, you're quite lucky, C64 owners, or are you? Because you've got two different versions. And then lastly, but not least, was the Amstrad, which I never played before until quite recently. So yeah, let's go. Let's have a look. See which version is the best, and see which version is the worst. I do rank the games from one to five. I only do the five UK micros they're not uk micros but they were released they were quite big over here at the time so i'd only stick with those five machines and i will do a poll in the community tab on my channel so you guys can pick your own favorites from the list of five we're about to see so yeah the wonderful flying shark do love that game even today it's one of those pick up and play games that i can play for an hour or so before i get fed up because it is tough but yeah my memory of the game itself I, I i don't really remember buying it but i remember having the full price case so i might have swapped it for something it may be in a friend of mine who might have left it around my place and never got it back could be any number of reasons why i had it but i don't remember buying it from the shop i do remember it being an absolutely fantastic game like I said previously, I only, only played it on the Spectrum uh, before ever playing it in the arcade or on an arcade emulator. <clears throat> the Spectrum version does take a lot of the good stuff from the arcade, especially the speed. Because the game runs at a nice tidy lick on the Sinclair Spectrum in comparison to the other four micros that we're going to look at. And so graphically, it has the Tarte effect on the screen, which is pretty cool. I find that a really good, clever idea, to be fair. So the sprites are quite small, but everything seems to fit within the screen really well. Graphics are unfortunately monochrome, but the detail on the graphics are very high. So it looks great. Sounds functional. Um, beeps and bops here and there. The music is done by the beeper chip. Uh, again, it's nostalgic to me because I played the game back in the day. But for those who are not used to the beeper chip, will soon get a headache. Listening to it. But like I said, what the Spectrum does do really well is it has the speed of the arcade. And it's quite a smooth game as well. When you look at the scrolling, it is silky smooth. But yeah, all the other stuff's there, like I said. The power-ups, power the extra weapon, or the, the bigger weapon, I should say, because you only get one weapon. Um, the restart or respawn points, because you die a lot in that game. But yeah, certainly would recommend the Spectrum version, hence why it is, for me, my favourite port of the game out of five micros now the Amstrad version looks like a straight port of the Sinclair Spectrum version now with the Amstrad version there's some bits in it I prefer um, the main downside to the Amstrad version is very slow now it ported over using the I'm not sure which high resolution um, mode the Amstrad is either mode 1 or mode 2 or mode 0 I don't know but whichever one it is it's, yeah, graphics are nice like the Spectrum. It uses four colours. So again, it's slightly more colourful than the Sinclair Spectrum. So it has the detail, a bit more colour. Nice use of the AY chip. So the music is quite good. Sound effects are cool. And there's a couple of benefits to the Amstrad version. A, 
when the enemy fire a bullet, you hear it. Spectrum version, you don't. And B, it's really slow, which someone like my sort of age can tolerate a bit of slow in a game like that because you can get out of the way, gives you time to think. As a Spectrum version, you're quite challenged like that mentally to get out of the way. And I do like to chase bullets, so if I'm chasing a bullet on the Amstrad 1, I can kind of change direction quite quickly and realise what I'm doing. But yeah, the downside is the speed, and it makes this version in particular nowhere near as playable as the Spectrum version, even though the benefits I just said are fine, but it seems to take twice as long to play the game. And you don't quite get the same buzz. I think I got a lot further on the Amstrad version than I did on the Spectrum version. So yeah, not bad, just too slow. If it was the same speed as the Spectrum, it would be better than the Spectrum version. It's a shame they didn't convert it in the native Amstrad um, resolutions. It probably would have looked very good. And been a lot more colourful. But speaking of a, an atrocity, the Commodore 64. Now, that game is brutally hard. Now, there are two versions of this game, one called Sky Shark, which I alluded to before, in America, which looks and plays better than what we got over here. Then there's Flying Shark, which got released in Europe. But yeah, it's grim. To look at, it's not nice. To listen to, is not pleasant. And to play, is an absolute bitch. The bullets move at such a speed, you don't even got time to think at all. You're just dead. Um, so what I did is put a compilation of all my deaths together in a clip that you're seeing. <laughs> that was bloody hell. Yeah, it's one of those games you think you move out of the way and you're just in the way. Every time, everywhere you go on the map, on the screen even, you're in the way. The bullets move at such a speed, it's unreal. But yeah, the music and the graphics, grim. Yeah, certainly is the worst version of the game that I've played, to be fair. As the 16-bit machines, well, they do look the part, don't they? The problem with 16-bit versions is they're done in such a way that the graphics or the screen is kind of horizontal, but they haven't gone for the Tarte mode. So what you've got is a, a screen that's quite short, uh, where it should be quite long, and then rather wide, where it should be rather thin. And all the crafts, unfortunately, airplanes and all the baddies and all that don't quite fit in the screen well enough for you to have time to react. It's a bit like Darius Plus on the Amiga and ST. It's just the, the sprites are too big for the play area. But the graphics are quite nice. They're, they're quite instantly recognisable. To be fair, the original arcade version didn't have great graphics, did it? But yeah, they translated okay onto the 16-bit machines. So the SD version is the one I had back in the day as well. So I did enjoy that. Uh, it's got good sound, good use of sound. Different rendition of the intro, uh, intro tune. Good sound effects as well. Uh, can slow down a bit though on the ST. There are periods where it does kind of suffer a little bit with that. But I do find the 16 bit versions generally very difficult to play. I can get on the second stage on both of them, but Christ, they're tough. But yeah, and the Amiga version, like I said, is identical. It's probably slightly smoother in places. Um, it's got a nice rendition of the, of the title tune, but the sound effects are okay. Uh, nothing great really to be fair, more beefier than the ST version sound effects, but yeah, nothing special. But again, I find the Amiga version difficult. I always find that when the game's been ported across from the ST to Amiga, I find the Amiga version more challenging for whatever reason. Not sure there's a timing issue or what, I don't know, but it just seems to be a more difficult game to play. But yeah, so in terms of my rankings, I've got Specky as number one, followed by the ST and then Amiga. Then Amstrad. And good old Commodore 64 is holding them all up. But yeah, I certainly would recommend you try the Spectrum version if you've never played it to see how it plays against the other four systems. You won't be disappointed. You've got to take a bit of time to adapt to the old uh, monochrome graphics and the beeper chip sound effects, but I'm sure you'll be all right. But there you go. Let me know what you think. I'll leave a poll in the community tab of my uh, channel. So please take part if you think other versions are better than Sinclair Spectrum. But yeah, I know it's kind of brand loyal. and People do stick with the machines they loved. And the cherished memories they have of those games. But yeah, I implore you to try Specky version out. So what I'll do now is leave some footage of the games I've just mentioned. The games, the systems I've just mentioned. And then do some side-by-side -side comparisons. You can kind of see how the games run next to each other, to be fair. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'll see you guys again real soon. So take care and bye for now.